I'd like to call this October 17th session of the Hoyer City Council to order. The clerk will call the roll and record those members present. Bartley? Bresnahan? Graney? Here. Jordan? Here. Leahy? Present. LeBron Martinez? Here. Lisi? Here. Lopez? Here. McGee? Here. McGivern? Here. Roman? Sullivan? Here. Tolman? Here. Bacon? Here. Valentine? All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America. And the city of Holyoke. And the city council. We have a special treat uh, this evening brought to us by way of our very able Ward 1 counselor, uh, we have two wonderful groups that are here this evening uh, to be recognized for a special recognition of some uh, uh, first up is going to be the Boys and Girls Club and uh, as we all know uh, they're recently celebrating 125 years uh, since they were established here in the city of Hoyoke and we couldn't be more proud of this wonderful uh, organization I know I certainly have my good memories as a child there and uh, we thank all of them uh, for uh, for coming this evening and uh, Gladys if you would be so kind as to escort uh, one or more representatives from the Hoya Boys and Girls Club to receive a proclamation and then I'd ask if you would be kind enough to read the proclamation and say a couple words thank you First and foremost, I want to thank the council for voting unanimously uh, in, in order to be able to present this uh, proclamation tonight to the Holyoke Boys and Girls Club. As they served 125 years of service to this uh, community and to many of our youth today and from the past who have benefited of these great services of the club and also working with families who utilizes the club, including um, including my own children's and grandkids as their after-school program, which provides homework help, tutoring, arts and crafts, and sports as a venue for um, children and youth as an outlet to express their talents. After speaking to so many youth in my community and alumni, they consider this place as their safe haven, haven. And I want you to know that we're very thankful for the work you all have done in having the service for the longest you have. With that, we um, the, um, be a resolve that the Holyoke City Council extends its congratulations to the Holyoke Boys and Girls Club in recognition of 125 years of service to the city of Holyoke and to the youth population in particular. And be a further resolve that the Holyoke City Council extends the best wishes for for continued success that this resolution be duly signed by the president of the city council and attested to and a copy therefore transmitted by the clerk and of the city of Holyoke, Kevin A. Jordan, Rena Murphy McGee on October 17, 2017. Thank you. Um, thank you very, very much. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Eileen Cavanaugh, and I have the privilege of actually being the executive director of the Holyoke Boys and Girls Club. And so um, what I'd like to say is that 125 years is certainly a milestone, and it's something to celebrate. But the reality is, is that we have a lot of work to do in our community, and the Boys and Girls Club is committed to doing that. And so we are talking not only about the past this year as our 125th celebration, but more importantly, we're talking about the future, and it's the future of our youth. So um, our mission statement is to um, work with youth who need us most to become competent, caring, contributing members of our society. And that mission statement honestly hasn't changed in 125 years. And so we are always looking to work with youth that want to come into the club, that need our supports and services, and we will take them on the path to adulthood. We will make sure that they succeed academically. We will make sure you succeed socially and emotionally. And most importantly, we're going to make sure that you know what you're going to do past high school graduation, because the expectation will be that you'll graduate from high school as well. So 
I also want to say that I have um, the privilege of being here tonight with Ann Mann, our Director of Operations, Maria Baez, our School Age Program Coordinator, and um, our board member, Emil Morales. And so each one of these individuals has been with our organization for many, many years. I also want to recognize that Jim Leahy is a longtime board member of the Boys and Girls Club as well. And so one thing that I do find most unusual about this organization is the longevity with it as being around for 125 years, but people who are involved with our club stay involved in our club. So past members are staff members, staff members are board members, board members are supporters and donors in the community. And so it's a really important model and it's one that we have contributed significantly, significantly excuse me, over the years to Hoyoke and have had some wonderful successes that have come out of the club. And we couldn't do it without the work from our local city council in Port. Um, especially with a lot of the state and federal grants that we um, receive that supports our funding and our programs and services. So um, one in particular is the Shannon Community Safety Initiative. We are the lead agency and have been for the last 10 years on a very important youth violence prevention program that helps support and funds programs in the city that um, work directly with youth involving them to make better choices and healthy choices and to stay off the path of violence and incarceration. And we do that in partnership with our next honoree and I'm very proud to say that it's been um, quite a privilege to work with Steve Liebloom and Jumpstart Neary in particular. So thank you very much for this. On behalf of the Board of Directors, the Boys and Girls Club and staff and youth and members, I want to say thank you very much. get everybody here but uh, we'll, we'll do our best okay great <clears throat> we have we have the pleasure of uh, another group of esteemed folks from the Neary School particularly the Jumpstart program led by Steve Lee Bloom and uh, we want to thank them all for coming and I'll turn it over to uh, Councilor Lebro Martinez again thank you um, Another vote from our city council to provide a proclamation tonight to Steve Loblum from the Neary Jumpstart program, which is a um, mentoring program that exists in the flats of Holyoke in the Ward 1. But more, it's to um, recognize someone who has never wanted to get recognition for the work he has done for the youth in our, our community. As you can see, this is just few of so many that he has worked with. And he has mentored a great number of youth from this community and continues to do so without wanting to get any merits or recognition as a, the program is about to be dissolved. I wanted to make sure your work has not gone unnoticed and how we appreciate all the work you have done. Mentoring our youth, as you may see, you have some in the audience who really appreciate everything you've done. And this was just in a matter of days they came together and we're here for you today and we will be here for you as always. Thank you. <laughs> but today we um, be, be a resolve that the Holyo City Council extends its congratulations to Steve Loblum from the Neri Jumpstart in recognition of his dedication and mentoring services to the youth in the city of Holyoke. Be further resolved that the, the Holyoke City Council extends its best wishes for continued success that this resolution be duly signed for the, from, by the president of the city of council and attested to and copy there, therefore 
transmitted by the clerk of the, um, the city of Holyoke, Kevin Jourdain, the president, Brenna Murphy McGee, our clerk, on October 17, 2017. I'd like Steve also to share the years that he's actually been on service because everybody was giving me a different day, uh, years of service, but he can share that. Okay, so I can clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Gladys, okay? To clarify that, if you take a good look, I have also been running Jumpstart for 125 years, okay? So, and this is who it is. No, really, we've been running the program for about 20 years, and um, what I'd like to do instead of a formal speech is introduce the folks that were sweet enough to show up tonight. So I will do that. I'll try to give a little, just a teeny bit of background about each one of them. Is that okay? Sure. Can you hear me if sure. I'm oh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so we'll start with Dee Marie. Okay, D, who is two, she joins us as two tonight. Um, uh, she has been with us for, we don't, 12 years, 13 years. And she's also been in a leadership position for a good part of those years. Alan, young man right there with a, can you turn around for a second, young man? matching sweatshirts here. Um, <laughs> Alan has been with us, let's take a, take a guess here, six? More. Way, way, more. way, way more. Come on. What do you think? Hansel, what do you think? About five years, okay? Behind uh, Alan is Hanser Perez. Hanser has been, first was a uh, young man in our program, primarily there to play basketball. Um, but for how many years? Let's take, yeah, how many? About 10 now? About 10. About 10 years with us. And now he is, he's no longer a kid in the program. He's one of our mentors. Um, next, to, next to him is his significant other. I can't say it the way I want to say it. Um, <laughs> And that is Nikki. Nikki was also with us as a kid in the program, and you have been with us for how long? long really long, 15 years, as a, just a, a young one she came wow. in. And she's also a mentor right now, and she's also the mother of Kiara, with two to the right there. And we, we knew Kiara well when Kiara was in Nikki's tummy, okay? We were very close to both of them. Which is, how old are you, Kiara, now? Nine. Nine years old. You know Tida, right there. How did you come into the program, Tida? Brother who was there before, and sister who was there before the brother. And this is like, uh, started maybe 15 years ago, somewhere, way, way back when. Love the family. Najeli. How did you get, when you came into the program, how did you get into the program? <laughs> Cousin. Those two are cousins right there, and brother, right? And you've been with us for how long? Six years. I know no one knows. Six, seven, eight years, somewhere like that, right? Next to, uh, next to Najee is Caitlin. Caitlin is Najee's mentor, and she's been with us for a few years. Um, and pretty nice woman, okay? Pretty nice woman. Um, so speaking of nice women, Sonia, right, right next to Najee, and she, Sonia is, Tida, we'll just give a little wave here. That is, Sonia is Tida's mentor. Um, and Sonia's been with us three years somewhere in there, okay? Next to Sonia is Najeli, who is um, Dee's mentee, and she's been with us for <laughs> years. Joanna, how did we meet Joanna? I think we might have met at the Shannon at the Shannon meeting, and Joanna's been a, a mentor for a few years with us, right? Okay, and we're we're pretty we're pretty tight. <laughs> Some more. Hi, Jody. <laughs> How are you? And Jody's children. Um, uh, Derek Garcia, A.K.A. Jelly, right there. Also, many years. You got all the money. You got all the business. My heart, right there. Big business. Okay. Yeah, um, know that. Freddie Falcone. How many years? How many? 12, 12 or 13 years. Freddie was another young man who initially walked into the program because he wanted to play ball with us. And then playing ball led to uh, more and better and nice stuff. Loli Montano, right there, with the red um, sweatshirt. We opened the program in March of 1999, and Loli was one of our first few kids to walk in the door. What a man, and what a difficult kid. But anyway, but still, very close for a lot of years. And, and really, what I just did there, without talking about the, how the program runs or how the program gets funded, that's really what the program is about. It's a community, and it's been the love of my life. 
and uh, it will continue to be regardless of what happens to the administrative end of it, okay? So thank you for that, but I still, I owe you one for this, okay? I really do, but thank you very much, okay? Thank you so much for Thanks. coming to see us. Really. Thank you, he did not want this recognition, thank you. Once again, I had some great special guests, so that was great, and we thank Councilor LeBron Martinez for introducing that. And I know Councilor Sullivan at our next meeting is going to have some other great special guests that we recently gave proclamations to, so we're looking forward to all of that. Um, we had one item that continues to be on the table, and I, I, I can say that this item was discussed in ordinance the other night, so there is a lot of progress being made, and I think... Uh, We'll have something pretty soon on this. And then the next up would be public comment. If, uh, but I don't see anybody having signed up for public comment for this particular meeting. So moving right along, we'll go to communications. First item up is marked item number two. Item number two is a communication from the city clerk. It's the minutes of our October 3rd, 2017 meeting. Is there a motion to receive and approve? Second. Motion's second. been made and seconded to receive and approve <laughs> item number two, the minutes of our last meeting. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Item number three. Item number three is the Board of Fire Commission minutes of September 1st, 2017. Motion to receive. Receive. Motion's been made and seconded to receive any discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Item number four is a petition from Forward Change Experiences doing business as Hobby Quest. This comes um, from an applicant by the name, I believe it's Antonia Santiago, for a special permit for a non conforming use to be located at 226 Sargent Street. Um, this is under Ordinance 4.7.2, and it looks like she would like to have a special permit for after school camps, birthday parties, and a different learning programs. The application was actually filed by the owner of the building. So if you recall, counselors, this is from Mr. Ryan's building. He had previously asked for a zone change. This is the apartment block located at the bend on Sargent near Magnolia. And uh, looks like he's looking to have some, a special permit uh, for some different uses um, in that building. Hey, you want to go to the ordinance? And uh, recommended on the floor is that uh, item number four go to ordinance. Okay. Just a clarification. Second. Sure. Well, why is it referring to each permit as non-conforming? Why is it reforming, uh, referring to non-conforming? That'll have to be studied. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure why he's calling it non-conforming. I guess we'll have to, to listen to that. I, just, I mean, before we set up a public hearing, it, it doesn't, on the surface, it does not make sense. Yep. And right. the, que the question is, is it even eligible for a special permit? Well, I think <coughs> we'll, we'll have to we'll have to inquire, Councilor Lisi. Well, I think the last time he came before us um, for the zone change, we decided that non-conforming use would be the more appropriate path forward for putting business tenants in the building. Um, well, I think the issue there is um, you can't create a new non-conforming use. 
those are continuations of prior existing non-conforming use or to make a modification to a currently existing non-conforming use the, the, that that space hasn't been occupied in quite some time and so um, the question gets into what are allowed uses there were certain things that were I believe uh, potentially allowed but uh, we'll have to we'll have to get into that and research again um, I spoke at length with him about a year or so ago um, but that was only under the context of he was looking for a zone change and um, in the end he didn't even want the zone change because if he had been granted the zone change it would have precluded him from having apartments in the building so he that ultimately was actually worse than the condition that he had it now so we'll have to refresh our memories on all this and see where they're going but Councilor Vacan thank you mr. president could we also send a copy to legal so that they can look to see if it would be eligible under the non-conforming use yep. before we set up a hearing yes I think both for four and five um, we could probably suspend the rules to allow because uh, it looks like item five is the same building so I believe um, um, would be appropriate to have take four and five as a package so moved. all in favor of that Aye. Aye. So, moving up item five. so item five is from the parlor parlor faded company LLC for a special permit for a non-conforming use and he would like to have vintage style barbershop um, to have uh, appointments there for that purpose. Also, this would be the other half of that first floor. Uh, and motion on the floor is to send both four and five to ordinance with a copy to the law department to ask them to weigh in on if the applicant is um, properly situated um, in order to even be eligible to apply for these. If, uh, and if the answer is yes, then we can continue to go forward. If not, then will uh, politely decline. So any other discussion? Hearing none, Sorry. all in favor of sending four and five to ordinance with a copy to the law department? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Uh, President's report. Um, just wanted to follow up on a couple items. Um, first of all, I wanted to talk about the CPA committee briefly. I did want to say uh, one that Andrew McMahon was, uh, who's a council appointee to the CPA committee, was today elected the chairman of the CPA committee. Just wanted to pass that on to you. Elaine Pluto was elected the vice chair, and Mimi Panich was elected the secretary. So all three very good appointments. We now have a full complement on the board. Um, but what I wanted to mention, and the committee, by the way, is going to start meeting by twice a month because there's just so much stuff going on, um, and they're going to try and meet basically every other Monday because they have a pretty full agenda to get going. But if there are counselors who are interested in replacing me on that committee, as you know, my term is expiring at the end of the year. Um, it might be something if somebody's interested in, in serving on the CPA committee, um, it might be a good opportunity to begin to kind of transition in a new person because uh, I currently serve as the council appointment. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, um, I could certainly, you know, talk to you about that and, um, you know, we can talk about maybe uh, transitioning later on this year uh, to a new person who can kind of pick up pick up pick it up for the beginning of the year if that interests somebody um, but it's going to be a very active committee it is I uh, would not uh, lie to you to say that you know this is going to be you know some easy assignment but I think it'll be a particularly rewarding um, assignment for those that would be interested in it because um, I think they are starting to really get their sea legs under them procedurally and otherwise so again a really a really good group um, I did want to just follow up um, again on the um, order um, relative the, that the council passed at the last meeting regarding uh, donations from the marijuana industry. I uh, did note that um, you know the council did pass that. I'm not. 
I didn't have been really gone through the process of reviewing. I, I myself did not submit a written submission, but I will say I received zero donations from anybody affiliated with the marijuana industry. I did want to just make that disclosure. I haven't, in fact, received any donations from anybody in 2017, to the best of my recollection, and that'll be reported soon. Um, but I did, um, I don't know what counselors reported, but I did notice that um, the mayor in his recently, uh, recent finance reports uh, did receive $3,000 two hundred dollars uh, from GTI um, executives um, recently um, and since I don't know if his if his disclosure is going to be forthcoming I figured I would uh, provide it for him um, I did take the liberty of reviewing his reports so um, he received four eight hundred dollar contributions from GTI executives and it's also interesting to note that when he signed his veto of our marijuana moratorium on August 10th, he received those donations just 20 days later. So I'll let anybody take whatever inference they wish to from that. Um, so anyways, um, you know, we're all about, and I will say I'm working earnestly in my closing hours in this esteemed body uh, to work to redouble our efforts in terms of good government and ethics. Uh, I'm very pleased to say that the Ordinance Committee is mightily working not only to resolve <coughs> our changes in the marijuana laws here in Hoyoke so that we can have um, good applicability as it would relate to recreational marijuana. Um, particularly with the cultivation component and getting that taken care of real quickly. Um, I would also say that we're also working closely on the ethics rules um, regarding uh, a number of different things. So um, stay tuned for more information on that. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the latest that I have. If there's any questions on any of that, um, I'll, uh, I pass that on. Okay, great. Reports of committees. Ordinance Committee 6A. The Committee on Ordinance to whom was referred a handicap parking application for Jordanus Figueroa of 552 South Summer Street recommended that the order be adopted. So, President, can we take 6A and 6B together? Sure. If possible? I'm second it. Okay. Motion is to suspend the rules to take 6A and 6B as a package. 6B is that the Committee on Ordinance to whom was referred a handicap parking application for Jose Ortiz at 615 South Summer Street recommend that that order be adopted. Motion on the floor is to suspend the rules to take these both as a package. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. <coughs> Chair, motion. A motion. To to receive and pass the first reading. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to receive and adopt the committee reports and to pass their first reading on both items 6A and 6B. Under discussion, Councilor Vacan. These came before the committee. They had gone through review and Don Welch had made a site visit and recommended approval of each of these. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor of passing the first reading? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Motion to pass the second, second reading. Second. Okay. Motion's been made it seconded to pass the second reading. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Motion that the passage be enrolled. Second. Okay. Motion's been made it seconded that the passage be enrolled. There is no further discussion. The clerk will call the roll. A yes vote is in favor of adoption of both 6A and 6B, and no vote is to deny both. McGee? McGivern? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Tolman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Graney? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Leahy? Yes. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Unanimous vote. By your unanimous vote, you have approved those two ordinance changes and granted those two handicapped parking applications. Item number 6C is a report from the Committee on Ordinance to whom uh, was referred an order regarding a street vendor license application for Jose Ortiz to operate a hot dog and soda cart on Spring Street. The committee, having considered the same, recommends that the application be approved. All five members of the Ordinance Committee. Motion to receive and adopt second. the committee report. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to receive and adopt the committee report. Under discussion, Councilor Bacon. Thank you, Mr. President. So Mr. Ortiz came in and gave us an overview and he was ably assisted by Councillor Lopez um, with some translation given the technical nature of some of the questions. And um, he answered all the questions. He has been a long standing um, person doing his vending at the site at the corner there on Spring Street. And the committee was very comfortable with him continuing and he came in and 
did everything by the book, so we recommend approval. Great. Any conditions related to that, Madam Chair? Um, oh, yes. Okay. Um, I'll defer to Councillor Bartley on that. Councillor Bartley, if you could help us. Ooh. I asked for it, didn't I? Um, yeah, so the conditions were um, hours, yeah. uh, 9 to 3. Hours. And then the times of the year, the, 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 uh, the, the uh, vendor wanted between April 1st to October 31st. And I just want to speak in favor of this applicant. He's, he's got a great product. It's in okay. right in the old registry parking lot. And um, so I'm great. in favor of this. Thank you. So is there a motion to uh, um, approve the application or amend the committee recommendation, which is to approve to have two conditions? So One moved. is that the hours of operation be <clears throat> 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And I assume that's um, what days of the week, please? Monday through Monday. Th through Saturday? Saturday? Monday through Saturday. Okay. Monday through Saturday. Thank you. And I'm writing all this on the committee jacket. Um, Mon Your work is never done, Mr. President. <laughs> we try. Um, hours of operation, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Saturday. And for the period of time, April 1st um, through October 31st. Uh, is there a motion to approve those I'm two old. conditions? Is there a second? second. All in favor of the Aye. amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so moved. Motion is now on adoption of the committee recommendation, which is to grant the street vendor license application as amended. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Councilor just, McGivern. Just for your information, Mr. President, both those conditions were adopted on by the committee and recommended to the body. And it shouldn't be the president that's adding and amending at, on, up for us at this meeting, because they, they were there. They were approved, and rightfully so, in front of the, uh, the applicant. Correct, and uh, unfortunately, they just didn't make it to the committee jacket, so I don't want them lost to history. Um, any other thoughts, comments? Hearing none, clerk will be kind enough to read the roll. A yes vote is in favor of adopting the committee recommendation. A no vote is to deny it. I don't think we've ever done a roll call for a vendor for license. For a vendor license? Uh, yeah, I think we should, because it's technically a license. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Tallman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yep. Graney? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Leahy? Yes. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Unanimous vote. By your vote, you've approved the license for Mr. Ortiz. Item and six. Mr. President, we can take 60 and E as a package. Okay. Motion's been made and second to suspend the rules to take item 60 and 60 as a package. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. <laughs> Item number 6D, Committee on Ordinance to whom is referred in order that a handicap sign be placed in front of 159 Wall Street for Angel Al Torres. Committee recommends that that be denied. 6E, Committee on Ordinance to whom is referred in order that the handicap sign be placed in front of 554 South Summer Street for Wanda Hernandez. Recommend that that be denied from all five members of the Ordinance Committee. Motion to receive and adopt the committee report. Motion's been made and second to receive and adopt the committee report and its recommendation to deny both of these under discussion, Councilor Bacon. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> um, so Don Welch, a member of the Disabilities Commission, did go out and do site visits. In both cases, he found that there was off-street parking available to the applicants and for that reason recommended that these be denied. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. These are, uh, actually, they never really made it to ordinance form, so I suppose we could just. Uh, no, it's just, yeah, it's not into vote. legal form because it was nothing to. Yeah, do. right. So, all in favor of uh, adopting the committee recommendations and denying these two, and aye. say aye, aye. aye. no, aye. opposed? Ayes carry. 6D, 6E adopted, and those are denied. 6F, thank you. 6F is a recommendation from the Committee on Ordinance to whom is referred in order that zoning ordinances for recreational marijuana be established. Furthermore, where medical marijuana zoning ordinances can be reasonably modified to accommodate recreational marijuana rules as well, then those existing ordinances be changed accordingly. Recommend that the order be given leave to withdraw. And Most this comes by way of all five members of the Ordinance Committee. 
Motion to receive and adopt okay. the committee report. The motion's been made and second to receive and adopt the committee report. Under discussion, Councilor Bacon. Thank you, Mr. President. This is really only a housekeeping item because we already had two orders that had been advertised for a public hearing and we didn't want to confuse the mm -hmm. discussion. Yep. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Now off to Finance Committee. Well, excuse me, there should be a six, I don't know the number, it's a late um, legal form. Oh, okay. 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 I'm not sure why it's K, yes. but it's K. Close to Q. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Close to Q. Is that a record? I think it's in the office. I can. No, we used to have we'll, AA, we'll AA, BB. I'll deal. Let's move the questions. We're so, going to push along with some of the finance and we'll come back to this. How's that sound? Can I indulge one more request of the council? Sure. Um, I would like to suspend necessary rules to take out of committee and take final action on the order that the fine for overtime parking be increased from $10 to $20 as requested by the department. As we may recall, we've been waiting now for about a okay. month and a half, and we did get the recommended rates at our last committee meeting, and because Crystal's been a little buried, she wasn't able to get it in form until today um, so that we could actually act on it, and there was some urgency uh, that we were requested to act on this to have things yep. in line with each other. So if the council would so indulge. Um, second. Second. Okay. I now actually have late, late file K as well. So <coughs> why don't we do a couple of things? One is uh, suspend the rules so that we can take up and go to uh, late file K, which for some reason I guess it just late getting the legal form but that was a that was heard uh at the ordinance committee um all in favor of that aye opposed so moved and then motion to remove from committee the item relative to changing the parking fines yes uh, as um, requested by the dpw referred to as agenda item number 56. okay agenda item 56 formally all in favor of removing that for committee for discussion aye, aye. aye. So moved. okay we'll take these up in um uh, order. So we'll start with um, late file K. Oh, I never look at these the committee on ordinance to whom was referred an order that additional handicap spices be added on Ivy oh, Avenue. Current handicap spices, if necessary, be reconfigured. Disposition recommend that the order be adopted. Have considered the same. Um, all five members of the ordinance committee recommend there is the measurements, there is legal form, and we thank the law department for putting that together. And I now turn it over to Councilor Vacant for the mo uh, motion. Thank pass you, Mr. President. Reading, motion to pass the first reading. Okay. Receive, motion. adopt, and pass the first reading. Motion's been made a second to receive, adopt the committee report, and pass the first reading. Under discussion, Councilor Vacant. Thank you, Mr. President. So this was on Ivy Avenue, where there does exist a handicapped space, but there have been new residents added to the street, and so therefore the need for the handicapped parking has increased. The Disabilities Commission advised us that they did not need to go and make a site visit because they had already approved a handicap um, need on the part of at least two parties in the area on the street. So the committee recommends to the body that we add two additional spaces on the street so that the folks that need them are not competing for them on a first come first serve basis. And we were assured that there's adequate room on the remainder of the street mm -hmm. for parking and that these two spaces would go from, I think it was number 19 to the corner yep. and that there's adequate space and wouldn't create a conflict. So on that basis, we recommended approval. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. So moved. Motion to pass the second, second. reading. Okay, motions have made a second to pass the second reading. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Motion that the passage be enrolled. Okay. Second. And ordained. Ordained, and, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm motions, adding back the steps. <laughs> yes. Motions, the, mo, motion has been made that the passage be ordained. There is no further discussion. The clerk will call the roll. A yes vote is to adopt the ordinance change, and no vote is to deny it. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Tolman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Graney? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Leahy? Yes. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. Lopez? Yes. 
Unanimous vote. By your vote, you've unanimously approved the change. Next up is item, formally marked item 56, was introduced by Councilors Jordan and Vacan um, that the Ordinance Committee review other related violations of parking and uh, make changes as necessary. We do now have the legal form in order. Um, as discussed, um, I'll just give the quick highlights of this as recommended from the uh, DPW uh, superintendent. Parking near a hydrant would increase from $15 to $25. City Hall parking deck violation, $15 to $25. Winter parking regulation violations, $25 to $35. Parking within intersections, $15 to $25. Sidewalks, $15 to $25. Parking in crosswalks, $15 to $25. And this goes on and on and on for a whole bunch. Over 12 inches from the curb, less than 10 feet from an unobstructed lane, entrances of hotels, theaters, and fire stations, prohibited zones, left side to curb, parking over one hour, front of private driveway, bus stops, taxi stands, exceeding 24 hours, in front of alleyways, double parking, we already did overtime, handicap space and fire lane would stay the same at 300 dollars and fifty dollars respectively there was no recommended change to those and motion to receive and adopt and pass the first reading okay, motion's been made it seconded to receive and adopt and to pass the first reading under discussion Councilor Vacan um, as Councilor Jordan nicely read out the changes um, that was very helpful um, it was to bring in line with the earlier ordinance that we had changed increasing the overtime parking from 10 to 20 and so we had created a conflict um, in our system, and so now we're correcting it to make them more uniform and consistent with each other. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of passing the first reading? Aye. Opposed, so moved. Motion to pass the second reading. <coughs> Motion to made it seconded to pass the second reading. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so moved. Motion that the passage be ordained. Second. Motion has been made it seconded that the passage be ordained. There is no further discussion. The clerk will call the roll. A yes vote is in favor of the ordinance change, and no vote is to deny it. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Tolman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Graney? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Leahy? Yes. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Unanimous vote. By your vote, you've approved the ordinance change, and that wraps it, correct? Yes. All Thank right. you, colleagues, for taking those up. Thank you. Uh, now moving and turning over to finance. Uh, first up, unless there's stop any. Yeah, I'll stop you there. <laughs> Maybe some to packages to, in to here. Make it easy for you. Thank you. We like Thank easy. Thank you. Uh, suspend the rules, take up 7A to 7J as a package. Ooh, okay. Package. Whoa, that's a big package. All right, we like that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, let me just end. Uh, Motion to suspend the rules to go through items 7A through 7J, also allowing an abbreviated reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so moved. So 7A, uh, to refresh your memories as stated on the agenda, transfer $3,255.13 from firefighters and lieutenants to injured on duty. 7B, transfer $6,051.91 from sergeants and patrolmen to injured on duty. 7C, transfer $10,910.86 from firefighters and lieutenants to injured on duty. 7D, transfer $11,573.03 from sergeants and patrolmen to injured on duty. 7E, transfer $12,812.99 from sergeant and patrolmen to injured on duty. Item 7F, $17,279.94 transfer from sergeants and patrolmen to injured on duty. 7G, transfer $4,483.40 from firefighters and lieutenants to injured on duty. 6,000, 7H, $6,451.21 from firefighters and lieutenants to injured on duty. 7I, Transfer $6,451.21 from firefighters and lieutenants to injured on duty. 7J, transfer $7,453.01 from sergeant and patrolman to injured on duty. That is the package. It's recommended for adoption. 
uh, from all five members of the Finance Committee. Your motion to receive, adopt, and pass Second. the first reading. Motion's been Second. made and seconded to receive and adopt the committee recommendations and pass their first reading under discussion. Councilor McGee. Yeah, in essence, what this represents, as everyone can read, is uh, police and fire, when someone goes on injured on duty, they move from one item to the other in order to, to pay out for that. Um, they range from roughly three people being out to the max at one time was eight people being injured on duty in a certain department. We did request and we did get information tonight, you know, what was the cost over a given year over the last three years as to what this has cost in the city when you're paying for injured on duty. Uh, for police, whether it's 2015, 16, or 17, it was roughly, uh, one was 182,000, one was 280,000, another one was 334,000, so it was a spike one year. Uh, for fire, they're relatively the same each year, so around two, 250,000. What they weren't able to produce, which was what we wanted, was uh, what was the impact to overtime when people are injured on duty. Uh, that has uh, never been recorded, was the response. So that they're gonna have to fix in the, in the future. This is money that's owed to people who go on injured on duty, it's standard. But the reason we have it in this format now is due to the new ordinance. Anytime you're shifting money from one line item to the other, we have to see it and approve it. Mm -hmm. We will send over to ordinance to maybe package mm -hmm. this a little better so it doesn't take up a full agenda to say if it's injured on duty, just package it in one and, and that way you can see the numbers. But this is based on the new ordinance and this is the way we get to, to view things. Right, and I think just to complement what the chairman said is, the true cost is not just this, which shifts it from their salary line to the injured on duty, as he eloquently pointed out, is because they're not there, you're paying them, and now you have to pay somebody on overtime to backfill their position, and those costs are, you know, quite quite significant. Councilor Sullivan, I saw your hand up. Yeah, question. Uh, to, yes, to, go ahead, Councilor Sullivan. Do we receive a, a detail or any kind of a list or accounting for the nature of the injuries, the cause of the injuries, the severity of the injuries? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think they're providing us that not, information. It's not on the, the only thing we get is the name of the person who is injured on doozy. I think I, we, for one, it's HIPAA, but two, personnel used to have um, a report, for, a report, but that was never provided to us either. Uh, so no, we don't get that. Yeah, we do have the workers. Uh, we have a workers comp line in the budget, and we also have a uh, police fire injury line. That's a uh, you know like 111F and all of those. Um, you can get reports from that that break out the dollars and the people. Then you'd have to go ask either the fire chief or the police chief as to the backstory as to, you know, why was Mr. Jones out for, you know, he received $25,000 injured on duty. Why was he out for, you know, th two months or three months, you know? Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. We know we had one recently, right, Mr. Ribeiro? We know that. We know the backstory on that one. We discussed that earlier. So, um, okay, any other thoughts on this? Okay. Uh, we have first reading in front of us. All in favor of passing that? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Pass second reading. Okay. Second. Motions have made and seconded to pass the second reading. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. A yes vote is in favor of adopting all of those items. That's 7A through 7J. A no vote is to deny all the items. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Sullivan? Tallman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Craney? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Leahy? Yes. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Unanimous vote. By your vote, you have approved all of those transfer requests. Next up is 7K. Mr. President, if you yes, can indulge me again. Uh, 7K, 7N, 7O, 7R, suspended rules, receive as a package, take them up as a package. Seven Second. K, N, O, and R. Correct. Great. N. So we got 7K. N O R. Great. Motion to suspend the rules to take 7K, 7N, 7O, 7R as a package and allow for abbreviated reading. All in favor of that? Opposed? So moved. 
Seven K is that the city council hereby accept the provisions of the municipal vulnerability preparedness grant. Seven N that the city council accept the provisions of the log pond cove Connecticut River invasive plant control project grant. Seven O that the city council accept the provisions of the Medal of Honor monument grant and 7R, that the City Council accept the provisions of the Office of the Attorney General Abandoned Housing Initiative Demolition Fund grant. Make a motion to receive, adopt, pass first reading. Motion's been made okay. a second to receive and adopt and pass the first reading on all four of these items under discussion. <coughs> Councilor McGee. I'll talk about three of them, then I'm gonna turn over one to Councilor Tallman because it was his baby, as I'll call it, it's his, his work, so. With regards to K, uh, the Vulnerability Preparedness Grant, that's really coming from our governor. He's giving uh, money to all cities in order to do a study within each city to see what issues could happen, whether it's a hurricane or a tornado, or whatever, and how the city is set up in order to address those type of problems. So we're getting $26,000 as a grant. There's no city match of which it'll come into the city and they'll go out and hire a, um, an independent party to do that study. It, this is all based on the governor wanting to make all of Massachusetts ready to address any type of issue that pops up, depending on their location, wherever, uh, if they're by water or not. With regards to N, uh, Andrew Smith came in. This is dealing with uh, an issue on the pond where water chestnuts are developing during a certain time and then they cause problems uh, for the gas and electric and everything else. So in order to stop using chemicals to address that issue, they're going out and it's, it's really the, uh, another entity getting a jet ski, volunteers and staff to then scoop it up with a special type of machine. They are giving the city $22,073 to help with funding the staffing of that person to do the, the cleanup. Uh, the no city match to that and it's just in order to help out with the the staffing uh, I'll skip over O and give that to Peter the last one 7r from the Attorney General's office we will receive fifty thousand dollars and there will be a city match to that CDBG money could be used to that but the the slight problem there is this is to deal with 405 407 Main Street in order to take it down it, 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 it's a hazard now the bids have come back and they far exceed what this grant and potentially a match will do. So the issue would be is if we accept it, yes, we have to match it. The CBG is going to help with that, but we might, might have to go to free cash once certified. That's not a guarantee. They're really trying to work on the bid process in order to keep it within the, the numbers, but it is 50,000 coming in to deal with that problem or it's all on us. So those are the grants. I'll turn over 7-0 to Peter. Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Medal of Honor Monument Grant um, is uh, something I've been working with uh, Jim Bronson, who's a, a Purple Heart veteran here in Holyoke. And uh, of course, we know we have the three Medal of Honor winners, uh, Mr. Bowden, Mr. McKenzie, and Mr. Muller. Um, of course, we know the Bowden Village, McKenzie Field, everybody goes through there, and, and the Muller Bridge. And, I think we, we had to talk last night about the youth and you know the importance of what these people did for our country and importance we're we're seeing these places and we're, we're going up to people that live in Bowdoin Village don't even know who it was named for. Um, so I, I think it's important that we get a monument for them. Uh, the the grant I don't have the amount exactly. Seventy five hundred. Seventy five hundred dollar grant and uh, the money more money will be coming from the community development block grant. Um, Mr. Bronson is now trying to get some bids. Um, it's probably going to be approximately um, $12,000. Uh, there's no city match, um, but this has to be, um, the, the fund has to be their um, grant to bring the money in the revolving fund. And they're looking at possibly, um, you know, for Memorial Day because, you know, Veterans Day is so close. But to get that where they can have the bronze plaques, you know, stating each, uh, each member and, have that at Veterans Park, and I think it'll be a really a good touch uh, for for our whole community to remember what these gentlemen did for for our country. Great, excellent, thank you, both of you. Any other thoughts, discussion? Just just on that. Yes, Councilor McGee. The grant is for seventy five hundred. The CDBG is roughly around nine thousand five hundred. Grant total for or the estimate was seventeen thousand. 
for a great cause and, and Councilor Tallman, we should thank him for all his efforts on this. This is this is his work. So great. Great job, Councilor Tallman. Yeah. Thank you. Um any other discussion? All in favor of passing the first reading on accepting these grants? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, so moved. Motion passed second reading. Okay, second. motion's been made a second to pass the second reading. Any other discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. A yes vote is in favor of adopting all four of these grants marked 7K, 7N, 7O, and 7R. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Tallman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Graney? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Leahy? Yes. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Unanimous vote. By your vote, you have approved all of those grant requests. Mr. President? Yes, Councillor McGee. 7L, 7M, and 7P. Uh, suspend the rules. Take up as a package. Second. Okay. All right, motion on the floor is to take up items 7L, 7M, and 7P as a package with abbreviated reading. All in favor of that? Opposed? Aye. So moved. 7L is that the City Council establish and maintain for fiscal year 18 a Wisteria Hearst Museum Activities Revolving Fund. Recommend that that be approved. 7M. For 2018, Roberts Field Sports Complex Revolving Fund, recommend that that be adopted. 7P, the Government TV Access Channel Revolving Fund be established and maintained for fiscal year 2018. And it looks like um, five members joined in support of the Government TV one. Councilor Vacan did not sign the jacket in favor of the other two. And so... Uh, is there a motion? Motion to receive, adopt, pass first reading. Motion second. Made, second to receive, adopt, and pass the first reading on these three items. Under discussion, Councilman McGee. All right, so for L, in essence, it's a Wisteria Harris Museum revolving account. All these represent the revolving funds that we have set up for each one. So one's for Wisteria Harris, one's for Roberts Field. Uh, the other one is for the cable access channel. For Wisteria Harris, there was roughly about forty to 45000 in there. Uh, they receive those funds from when they do shows, they're doing rentals, whether they're renting out for pictures, weddings, what have you. That money goes into that account. Uh, one of the questions that did come up is they have three part-time employees that we put into the budget, uh, I think it was two years ago, mm -hmm. of which then they take from this revolving account to pay for the difference. So the city pays up roughly around 25000 to cover those three, and then whatever else is needed they take from this account to pay in. The question was, by taking out of this account, are they actually using it to help pay into the services that get provided, which is sick time, vacation, retirement, or insurance? None of the employees currently take city insurance. However, they are getting the other benefits. This account does not pay in for those. It just pays for the salaries, of which the response by the auditor was the city does receive uh, about 25% of the revenue from the rents that come out of there, and they says that helps offset it and equals a wash. That was response in the email. So this is a standard account we uh, see for Wisteria Hearst because they do get the monies coming in from rentals, and then they use it to go out and advertise and everything else. The the switch was when they added the uh, three members as a full uh, not full time but employees that are now part of the budget process. So that count is there. The next one is for Roberts Field. That's standard in the sense of renting out Roberts Field, whether it's for football, soccer, what have you. The money's there for staffing as well as paying the electrical bill and everything else. So those numbers seem to be correct. The final one, 7P, was for the cable access. Um, this is the older account. Uh, they thought they had to set up a new account, and that's why we kept tabling it to get the group in, the new media group in, to discuss what they were doing, but this account was still standing, of which they put the money in there anyway. So 91000 just went in there because the account's still going. This is for the high school in order for them to use the monies to, to do what they have to do. So that's why you approved all three accounts. Um, if anyone has any questions on that, I'll, I'll answer them. Does the council approve transfers out? No. That's, that's why the revolving fund's there. It's for right. them to go without. What the? Okay. And anybody makes gifts 
the money goes into Wisteria Hearse? Oh no, all oh. gifts have to come first. They're just making sure that's still coming here. No, that's though. the same thing. Any gift right. that comes in the city has to come to the city council be accepted. Okay, <laughs> good. Just making sure. Oh, what, I, I do apologize, Mr. President. On P, one thing that we did request, this is from the, the time that we met the members of the media uh, committee, an accounting of what's going on over there, what monies they do have. They did say that uh, Dave Morton was their CPA, of which uh, Josh said he has reached out to him to get the accounting that uh, certain counselors wanted in order to see what was going into that new 501c3. C3. Okay, great. Is it? Councilor Lopez. Uh, on item P, uh, is it possible to put a condition that if we don't receive that report, that we will come back and deny it's you, legal you to can do table that? it you have every right to table, table it until wait we get the report yeah i would like to table then if, if i don't okay i know we have been looking for the audit report they're supposed to be doing one really every year it seems like they do it when they kind of feel like it councilor mcgivern but the report councilor mcgee is talking about has nothing directly to do with item number p this is the money i think you can re remember uh, mr president that is always gone to the schools by contract right. and they do the peg access they do the the media stuff they did do in the schools and other things that have come out of that account uh, a little bit of it goes to personnel services in the schools mm -hmm. but they control the rest of it the real money since the the, the franchise uh franchise fees. fee has been increased is sitting in another account which we have not seen right. and that's the account that we're looking for but we're not we're not voting on that this evening right only a portion of the franchise fee goes to pay this, to pay who oversees our meetings, the educational channel thing. About 45,000, I think, is the number that strikes, uh, rings a bell to me. Um, you're right, the franchise fee, where all that's gone, who, you know, it would be nice to have an accounting of that. So I would like to withdraw my motion. Okay, because this that's is for fine. The school. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so motion on the floor is uh, at first reading to adopt all three of these. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Motion to pass the second reading. Second. Motions have made a second to pass the second reading. Any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. A yes vote is to reauthorize or newly authorize these three items. Uh, a no vote is to deny. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Coleman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Graney? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Leahy? Yes. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Unanimous vote. By your vote, you've approved those th uh, establishment of those three funds. We now have item number 7Q we need to deal with. And uh, Mr. Chairman, what would be your pleasure? It looks like deny on this one. This, it is. It was a here. typo. I corrected the typo. Okay. So that should read denied on your agenda. And we'll go to that item. The Committee on Finance whom was referred an order that hereby establishes an elderly health services revolving fund. The committee recommends unanimously that be denied. Make a motion to receive, adopt, and pass the first reading to deny it. Yep. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to receive the committee report and to um, vote on its first reading. And the recommendation is that it be denied. Under discussion, Councilor McGee. Yes, just just be clear. We're not getting rid of the account because we don't like the account. It's the account's not being used; hasn't been used in several years. Mm -hmm. uh, the director came in. There's roughly 1,200 in there uh, since she's come on as director of um, um, the senior center. They've never touched this account, and due to its structure, the the limitation of the language, they can't use it anyways. I chatted with her last night to see if you know cause she could use it in some other way. And she said, no, I'd rather have it given back to the city to go to the general fund and they can use it for some other expenses. So mm -hmm. it's an account they just don't need anymore, really can't use, and therefore the recommendation by them was to just shut it down. They don't need the revolving fund anymore. Great. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none. Mr. Oh, Brown, Councilor Graney. Yeah, uh, just a question. What was the account used for prior to this? She said it was for, uh, they used to have a, a contract and I forgot with what department but to do blood pressure checks and everything else for seniors but they still do that anyways and there was supposed to be a reimbursement but the way the new setup is they go out and do it anyways and this account really can't be used to pay for those costs so she said in essence the account just stays stagnant 
So in essence, what they can come back and do is, since the account can't be used, shut it down, go back to uh, the general account. If they actually need money, ask for requests, come in for free cash, and do it in that fashion. But the account, the way it's drafted now, and the way they set up their new systems, they can't use it. Then this money can't be transferred back into the seniors, senior center budget? You have to shut down the account, have it go back to the general fund, then request it out of free cash, and then give it back. Just can't roll over. Any other discussion? On first reading, all in favor of adopting the committee recommendation, which is to deny. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Pass second reading. Second. Motion's been made a second to pass the second reading. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call a roll. A yes vote is to uh, effectively deny the establishment because the committee recommendation is to deny. So a yes vote is to deny, a no vote is to approve. Clerk will call the roll. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Tolman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Graney? No. Jordan? Yes. Leahy? Yes. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. Lopez? Yes. 12 yeas, 1 nay. By your vote, you have adopted the committee recommendation, which is to deny that. And next up is 7S. 7S and T, suspend the rules, take up as a package. Okay. Motion's second. been made and seconded to suspend the rules to take up items 7S and 7T as a package. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. So moved. 7S. Committee on Finance to whom was referred an order that the City Council receive a copy of the contractual agreement between the City of Hoyoke and Frontier Management regarding Lynch School property. I would like the Council to review this agreement in detail as soon as possible. I have requested this information previously, but I have not received it. Recommend that this order has been complied with. 7T. The Committee on Finance to whom was referred an order that the Mayor or his designee inform the Council as to the <coughs> cost of renting the City Hall Auditorium does the cost associated with the auditorium cover all DPW or <coughs> other city employees that are needed to speak, to set up, or break down the auditorium before and after the parties? If the cost of renting the auditorium is not paid for by the renter or does not cover any work or overtime of city employees who is covering these costs, recommend that that order has been complied with. Uh, make a motion to receive and adopt that it's been complied with, both of them. Okay, motion has been made and seconded that the committee reports be received and adopted under discussion. Councilor McGee. Yes, we received the copy of the contract from um, for Lynch School. It is now nullified simply because they're past their, their time frame. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're out of the mix, and now um, uh, Marco said that they are going out to a new RFP in order to try and get other developers in there. So Frontier is gone. Uh, their, their time limit is over, but there is a copy of the contract. Uh, 7T, uh, Rory sent in a copy of how they uh, have a contract for renting out uh, City Hall upstairs and the cost and everything, and they sent that over. I did have um, Ryan send both contracts on both issues out to everybody in order to address their issues. And those would not be for rentals for greater than a period of 30 days, correct? Yep. It's kind of for weddings, for... One day yeah, events. One day event, yeah. Yeah. Because we've had people, seems like they're playing kickball upstairs on Tuesday evenings. Yeah. And, um, you know, it seemed like it was happening more than one Tuesday. So that seems like that was over 30 days. But, yeah, somebody wants to, if it's under 30 days, it doesn't come under the purview of the council. If it does, then we need to be uh, review that, shall we? So, motion on the floor is to um, receive and adopt the committee reports. Continuing with the discussion, Councilor Bartley. Uh, so, Mr. President, I just thought the um, public would be interested to know. I, I think if anybody reads my uh, my email newsletter, they would know us already that the, that the uh, RFP has already been re re replied to for Lynch School, Mr. President. We received four applications. I don't have the dollar figures yet. Um, two would of the applicants would uh, demo the school two would preserve it and reuse it. And so there's a team that's uh, reviewing that now and um, I'm waiting to hear back. I, I have no knowledge of what the numbers are on the bids. 
Uh, I thought the public would also be interested in knowing that the geriatric authority bids um, should have been returned by now, and I'll follow up with that at some point with Ms. Belanger uh, this week. So there you go. Great. Thank you. All in favor, if there's no other discussion, all in favor of adopting the committee recommendations? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. We have no public safety, public service, DGNR, charter and rules, or joint oh, committee President. meeting and, uh, items for this particular meeting. I recognize Councilor Bartlett. Well, I, I just want to thank, because we didn't have a, a DGR meeting. We, we never get these. So may I just take me 15 seconds? Sure. Dear Councilman Bartley, Sullivan, Tom, and McGivern, I would like to extend my warmest thanks for your patience in resolving the issue of my zoning variation, vari well, variance. Twice I came before the DGR committee, and each time you were extremely kind and helpful. Ne never get those emails. The sign Dave Bartley. <laughs> <laughs> This is Bartley. Uh, that, that, <laughs> that'd, be weird, that'd be weird if I addressed it to myself and signed it, but uh, <laughs> no, no, Jim. That was uh, that was signed by a uh, Ward Six resident, and uh, she was most grateful to us. So I just want to recognize the committee again for its hard work. Thank Ward you. Six residents are always very grateful. Councillor Tallman. Yeah, I just I just wanted. To, I'm glad he brought that up. I, I got that email. It really really felt good about that and responded to her that she she came in prepared. I mean, she had everything all set up. She had the video, the neighbors, the the, the building, the engineer, everything. And you know, she came back. But um, it's just a lesson of, of patience. I think she was patient. We were patient. And uh, through the the chairman, he, you know, we he just said we're going to work with you on this. We're going to get through this, and uh, it, it worked out really well. And it's good to see that uh, government in action like that. Oh, really appreciate your work. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you. You too. Yeah. I will, Mr. President. Council President. I will say that the Public Safety uh, Committee is meeting on the 26th, of, which is a week from this Thursday. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Good job. Moving right along to motions, orders, and resolutions. We're first at item number 13 on an order introduced by Councilor Graney. Order that the Parks Department and DPW consider moving the memorial stone marker at McKenzie Field to a lo location that would be more advantageous for public viewing. The stone is now currently located outside the ballpark. Could I be added as a co sponsor? Yeah, me too. I'd like Council to be added. President. Yep. Adding Jordan, Leahy. Thank you. Tallman. Yeah, thank you. Bresnahan. That's so much to consider. We should change it to, to have it moved. Um, well, let me speak to it, Mr. President. Yeah. Councilor Graney. I'm assuming this is on adoption and sending to the Parks and DPW, correct? Yeah. That's your motion. I had a conversation with a Coach Joe. Second to that, so under discussion. Second. Second. Yeah. I had a conversation with Coach Joe McCarthy, who was very active in baseball circles. And that stone marker now, where it's located, is really in the left field corner but it's not even in the ballpark and people don't even use that entrance anymore so here we have a a, a, a monument to a veteran uh, medal of honor winner that's not being showed to the public and i think it's paramount that we move it somewhere where it's mm -hmm. where it's in, in plain view for everybody right yep it's a great point it's a great idea any other thoughts council lopez can you add my name to the order also and sure any I, Council Lopez? I, I'm afraid just to uh, forward this order with our specific location. Do you have any specific location we would like to see it? That I'm not sure of, uh, Council Lopez. Uh, uh, the most advantageous one would. You know, it's up for discussion. I don't know what, what what that would be actually. Something prominently located at the entrance, I would think. I would I think, think so. Yeah, yeah that would, that would be, be the way to go. Since it's up for adoption, maybe we want to amend it to say something to that effect yeah. otherwise we're going to be excluded from that conversation yeah that's a good point so how about a friendly amendment that we say that it be moved um to a more advantageous location for public viewing at the entrance to mckenzie field sure that's second right. okay second, yeah. so adding at the entrance of mckenzie field All in favor of that amendment? Aye. 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 Oh, so moved. Okay. Um, if there's uh, no well, further just, discussion, Councilor Graney. No, just maybe, maybe just to, to uh, a minute to remove, consider, and to move the memorial stone. Second. Yeah. No. Well, how about we just go? Please move. 
How about that? Instead of consider moving, please Second. move. Okay. DPW, move. We, we try oh, to be fine. polite here. That's fine. Please move. Okay, friendly amendment to change the words consider moving to please move. All in favor of that amendment? Aye. 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 Oh, so moved. If there's no further discussion, all in favor of adopt. Oh, Councilor Sullivan. Uh, just maybe somebody help me with this. There's three entrances to McKenzie yeah. Field. Well, so, I think the prominent one would be the one near the parking lot. The, yeah, I would say that would be the main entrance. I would think by the high school. Yeah. Uh, you want to? I, th I think that's the best one you could probably come up with. Yeah. The one yeah. near. Yeah. You want to yeah. put that down in that order, please. Yeah. <laughs> with the blue, with the blue, blue socks, socks. like the back right. of the plate. Yeah. The side entrance. Yeah, that's the main entrance, right? Right. We're, we're talking about the parking lot. Off of Pine Street by the high school? In front of the high school. Just off of B Street. It would be actually the one where it's sort of the, uh, where they make deliveries to the high school. The that that the little run there. On that's, staircase. Exactly. That the that's yeah. actually the main <laughs> entrance of where they sell tickets yeah. coming in and out of the Blue Sox. Yeah. I, was, I would be thinking there. The landing, Sully. It's the entrance. Yeah, I, <laughs> I get that. But... Um, the, the entrance down on the uh, um, Franklin Street, Pine Street side gets a lot more traffic. Uh, you know, the, the one off the high school side. I wouldn't be adverse to putting two there, to be honest with you. Put a plaque at each, you know. But. Yeah. Want to do a plaque, a plaque, at each a plaque at each entrance? Is that a friendly amendment? Sure. Right. Second. Yeah. Yeah. Let everybody know who he is, right? Yep. Okay, motion on the floor is to amend it to say at uh, a plaque at all, uh, both, both main entrances. Okay. Um, all in favor of that amendment? All right. Aye. 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 At both oh, pretty good stuff. main entrances. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor of adopting and referring to the Parks Department and DPW? All in Aye. favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Good order. Um, I'd like to take up items 14. 15. 16. And 16. Well, let's think about 15 for a minute, but 14 and 16 for as a package, please, with abbreviated reading. Okay. All in favor of Aye. that? Aye. Oh, so moved. Okay. So item 14 says that we're going to have a city election, that it's going to be on November 7th, that it's going to be at all the designated uh, polling locations. There have been no changes, that it's going to occur between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m., and that we're going to have an election for mayor, clerk, treasurer, school committee at large, Six city councilors at large. And where's the rest of the order? Here we go. We're also going to have an election for ward councilors and ward school committee members. And I do not see any changes in any of the polling locations for <laughs> wards one through seven. So motion is on the floor. The These are already to take as a package would be to adopt. Motion to adopt. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. So that takes care of 14 and 16. And now we have item 15. Okay. Uh, motion, oh, excuse me, item number 15, that we suspend <laughs> rule one to... Um, as it relates to our November 7th city council meeting and reschedule this meeting since that coincides with election day. And what we could do is... Call a special meeting if needed. You want me to just leave it at call the president, see, see where we're at if needed? Yeah. And I, I would be thinking maybe the day after or the Thursday after is, if needed, is the 8th or 9th? No. <laughs> I'm going to be exhausted. Nine You're going to be exhausted. Be okay. <laughs> right, right. I think right. the city clerk just come, huh? <laughs> I don't okay. think, I mean, we normally just cancel it, and if needed, we, you can call a special meeting. Okay. So you want to just roll with that, and then maybe we go. That means it. we'd go a month with no meeting. We've always done it that way. 
Not always. No, not, not always. Not always. Do you mean a month between when huh? we're meeting? Is that what you mean? A month between mm. today and the next meeting? Correct. Yeah. Because we'd be going from third, third, third Tuesday in October to third Tuesday in November. Yeah, right. That's if we have time. no other meeting, that's a long time. It's a long time. Just so we're aware of that. I mean, I, 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 I appreciate, obviously, we're not going to do anything probably that week. People would be exhausted. But maybe, following maybe the following. Following Wednesday 15th. after ordinance, that would be a possibility. Yep. Is that, yeah. Okay. Is that possible? Maybe something the week, the following week? The refresh my memory, though, because like, I'm thinking in the last three elections, we haven't done this. I don't think we have, no. And so have we got a month? over here said right. that we have, and well, we haven't. Thank you, Dave. Well, let's play it by ear. Yeah. How about that? That's what I said. Sounds good. Um, okay. All right. So uh, the general consensus is to adopt this to cancel the meeting effectively, right? And okay. leave, so we'll amend this to say reschedule this meeting to say um, cancel the meeting and uh, leave it subject to potential special meeting by call of the president. Okay. So a uh, friendly Second. amendment, friendly to, amendment. Yeah. to change, reschedule this meeting, to cancel the meeting, and leave uh, subject to possible special meeting by call the president. Any, is there a motion to do that? Motion. So, so moved. Is there a second to second. that? Second. All in favor of that amendment? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor of adopting? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved, done, okay. 15, done. 16, done. 17. 17. Order introduced by Councilor Jordan. Order that an ordinance section 86106 permit parking be amended to reflect the following changes that no more than two parking stickers be allowed per household, that the ordinance reflect that Center Street is only addresses one through 20 Center Street from North Canal to Lyman Street. Receive sent to ordinance. Motion to second. second to receive, refer to ordinance. These are some housekeeping items that, uh, for good governmental efficiency we're trying to put into place. So uh, unless there's any discussion, all in favor of sending to ordinance? Aye. 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 Oh, so moved, item number 18. Item number 18 is an order introduced by Councilor Jordan that the mayor, procurement officer, law department, a representative of Hampshire Towing, a representative of Reds Towing, appear before the city council to discuss campaign donations made to Mayor Alex Morse during the period January 1 through September 8, 2017, which appear to be in violation of Ordinance 2-335 and moreover appear to be a material breach of their contracts with the city. A discussion of how this matter can be remedied should also take place. I'm requesting that 18 go to ordinance committee for so discussion. Moved. So moved. Okay. Second. Any other discussion? I will say that apparently the law department issued an opinion on this today. And I would just note that after we just got a request to make not make unsolicited legal opinions, we received an unsolicited legal opinion. Who was it from? <laughs> You want to take that order up now, you know, uh, Mr. President? On what? It, is, is it a late file? There is no late file. It's not late file as a communication? I don't believe so. What I just got it on my desk. What attorney did is. that, Mr. President? Crystal. Can you want to read that out so we have it? Yeah, she basically feels that there's two paragraphs, one of which I agree with, one of which I don't agree with, but well, that's neither here nor there. We were going to discuss it in committee. But the first is that she feels that they're somehow grandfathered I don't know how you can grandfather something when it's a law. You can't rather, it's like me having a contract with somebody and then the state legislature pass a law. I can't have contracts that conflict with law. But um, apparently she feels at some point later they'll be subject to it. And then the second piece is that we have no jurisdiction to return campaign donations. That's outside the city's enforcement capabilities. But the ordinance doesn't speak to returning campaign donations. 
we, we're, we, when we discussed this with Kara Cunha, we specifically had nothing to do with the return of campaign donations because that's not under our purview. The issue was that the penalty would be it's a material breach and it would rescind the contract. That is under the purview of the city. So that was the, the penalty. So I agree with the second paragraph. I don't agree with the first, but we'll, I'm sure we'll have a thoughtful discussion. But um, the, the point is we pass laws. We want to make sure that they're enforced. So motion on the floor is to send them to ordinance. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. So moved. Roll call. Roll call on sending it to ordinance? I, I heard some no's, so I just wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page. Oh. Second. Roll call. Sure. I don't care if we want to have a vote on a roll call vote on sending it to committee. Yeah. Okay. Three members having asked for a roll call vote. All in favor. Uh, Clerk will call who, are the the who are the three members? I only had two. Howie, Jimmy, and myself. Oh, Howie, okay. I to use those Q-tips, man. All right. I didn't hear, I didn't hear Granny. Yeah. Clerk. So just to be clear, I said no because it's a, it's a no in the sea of yeses, and it's going to ordinance committee anyway, and I'm not objecting to it going to ordinance committee. I just wanted to voice opposition because I knew that it was going to be drowned out by the yeses. So if you want everyone to know that it was me that said the single no, it was me. Do you need a roll call still? I'm, I'm unsure if that's necessary. I think I heard multiple ones, necessary. but do we have discussion? Is this... um, three members, I'm just going to cut right to the chase. Three members having asked for a roll call, we're going to have a roll call vote. Motion is on sending the item 18 to the ordinance committee. Clerk will call the roll. Yes vote is to send it to committee, and no vote is not to send it to committee. McGee? Yes. <clears throat> McGivern? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Coleman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Bresnahan? Yes. Graney? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Leahy? Yes. LeBron Martinez? Yes. Lisi? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Unanimous vote. By your unanimous vote, 18 is off into committee, and we now but move check on. Check those ears out, will you? <laughs> right. a, I, there was no, there were all yeses, right? <laughs> Second were. time. One big happy family here. Uh, moving on to item number 19, introduced by Councillor Leahy. Uh, because the regulatory speed limit on Lawler Street is 30 miles per hour, that the police department conducts a speed study to determine if the limit should be decreased to 25 miles per hour. If the police department concludes that the speed needs to be reduced, that they petition the mass DOT for approval, then change the signs. Please send this order to the police department and a copy to the superintendent of the DPW and public service subcommittee. Receive and dot, please, and send to the uh, chief of police. Motions Thank have been made and seconded to uh, receive, adopt, and refer to the chief of police under discussion. Councilor Lee. Yeah, under discussion, I also sent a copy of this to Councilor Bartley as well. Um, currently, right now, the speed limit on Lawler Street is 30 miles per hour. Uh, speed bumps have been put in. Um, at this time, I talked to, uh, uh, I talked to um, uh, the TPW superintendent. And he said that the only way to change that down to 25 miles an hour is to have uh, the police department get the ball rolling and they have to do uh, their own traffic um, uh, study. Then if they deem it appropriate to be 25 miles an hour, then they send it to the mass DOT. Then that's how they change it. Interesting, just a friendly suggestion because we've seen these on a couple other streets. The, my best recollection was the DPW put out the tapes and then they did the average speeds yeah. on the street and then they'll come back to the ordinance committee and say um, the average speed on the street is 37 miles per hour <clears throat> and it's currently at 30 so yes something could be done for enforcement um, or they'll come back and say the average speed is 24 miles, 24 and a half miles per hour. So no change is, is required. So they're putting, they're saying it's the now the police has to weigh in on. But Michael McManus had told me he okay. said that what they do is they do their own. Uh, he was reading it through the statute. There's statutory, there's regulatory uh, speed limits, and uh, for us to do this, and for us to change that, we have to opt in, which is the second order. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to rec just one minute, Councilor Green. I'm going to recognize Councilor McGivern. He had his hand up first. I, I, I understand what Councilor Leahy is trying to do and what Mike McManus, McManus is saying, because what we're doing is proposing to go under the thickly settled uh, blanket ordinance of the city, which is 30 miles, 30 miles an hour. But this is for one street, not for the entire city. And we can go one street at a time and suggest 25 or 20 
we may not get the warrant from the state, but we can do it. Yes, we should have the police department do the study, and yes, then we should act on it ourselves. Then send it to the Mass Department of uh, uh, DLT. DLT. <laughs> but a a a not to correct him, but however, we can't do that until we opt in. Um, we can't go street by street until we opt into the Mass General Law 9017 uh, C. Once we opt into that, then we certainly then it's uh, it's the Department of uh, it's the Police Department working with. Uh, Mike McManus, and they, they now could do that. Okay. Councilor Green? Yeah, um, I, I thought that uh, I heard Councilor Lee say that the, the speed bumps were at on Lawler Street. I think yes. I, I went over the other day. The speed bumps have been removed from oh, they're, they're there. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Barley weighing in on the presence or non presence of speed bumps. <laughs> <laughs> they're there. Can, they're, can you they're, verify they're, that? They're still there, Councilor. All right. Yeah. yeah. Still there. And then, may I, Mr. President? Yes, of course. So just, just two, two things, and I, I always thank uh, Councilor Leahy for, uh, he always has good orders. I, I'll just, just add two things. Councilor Lisi filed an order, I, I think it might have been at the August meeting, but it, it was at some point I, I, in September where Mass Municipal Association said they passed this, got this thing passed the legislature, Boston's done it, Springfield's done it, and a few other cities to have a blanket-wide lower the miles per hour from 30 to 25. So Councilor Lisi filed an order. It's now an ordinance committee, and I'm sure we'll take it up at some point. Second of all, we already fi I filed this, not this exact wording, but at the first meeting in September to put up the speed box and all that. So we have this, we have this going. I I'm, I'm happy to co-sponsor co this one again just to emphasize it. But the, the, box is, uh, the box was there. I, had it, I asked for it to be removed because they're the repaving the street. The street is now resurfaced, more or less, or repatched, and the, the HPD will put the box up and they will calculate the speeds. So we're on, we're on point on this. But thank you, everybody. Okay. Okay, Councilor Barley is a co-sponsor as he's requested. Yeah, no, absolutely. Fair. Okay, Councilor Leahy. Yeah, no, this already doesn't want the speed box there. Uh, what it wants to, uh, is the police department to do their traffic study. And they're uh, utilizing that, um, from what I was told by uh, the department of uh, Mike McGannis, is uh, what they pretty much do is they drive down the streets at different speeds, and then they track which one they feel that is safe and what is not safe. So I, I want to, this order, to, this is pretty much the language he gave me, both these orders. So I want to uh, maintain <coughs> this, and I don't necessarily uh, want the, uh, the speed box is there, that's great, but. Okay, Councilor Bresnan. Um, <clears throat> on the 26th of the public safety five. meeting that we're having, item number five, five is that the Hoyoke Police Department monitor speeds on Lawler Street and report its findings. I believe that was your yeah. order. I'm that not 100% was... sure, but so yeah. I encourage the 26th, I've, I, and I spoke to the chief of the police today in this very order um, and asked him to, that you know, just making him aware of it. Ryan is telling me that an agenda was brought to him because his email is kind of quirky from my email, I guess, to him. Um, <laughs> so th there's, a, there's an order that's being taken up a week from this Thursday on Lawler Street Speeds. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other thoughts or concerns about item 19? Councilor Tallman. Yes, yeah, so the maker of order, if you don't mind, if I could put my name on today. Absolutely. That. Thank you. I think Councilor Tallman is a co-sponsor. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none. All in favor of adopting the order and sending it off to the police department? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Item number 20 is introduced by Councilors Leahy, McGee, and Vacan that the City of Hoyoke opt in to Mass General Law Chapter 9017C, which will establish 20 miles per hour speed limit in thickly settled or business district in any city or town. What this will do is setting the reasonable and proper speed on all city and town owned streets within thickly settled or business districts at 25 that do not already have an existing special speed regulation. If the city adopts this language, Hoyo can also adopt a 25 mile per hour thickly settled zone, um, speed zone on a street by street basis. I received adopt and uh, I think, uh, I'm sorry. I received adopt and send a copy of the ordinance. And maybe you sure you want to adopt it tonight or as opposed to send it to ordinance just, and no, have right. a discussion? Excellent point, yeah. Receive okay. and send to the ordinance. Okay. So then, then we'll have a meeting, discuss the implications, 
and then we'll vote on the next uh, nearest opportunity. And with this too, um, I sent it to all the ward councilors because I figured this would uh, certainly affect all. Just, to you. just for my layman's knowledge, sure. just so everybody understands, <clears throat> the current default is 30, yeah. and this makes it 25. It makes it have, uh, so the, uh, Mike McManus can change it to 25 without going through a lot of hoops. Okay. All right. I'd like to be added on that order. Adding Councilor Bresnahan as a co-sponsor. I'd like to be added on also. Adding Councilor Tallman as a co-sponsor. Okay, adding Councilor Graney. 25 might be too high, Graney. Mr. Graney. Might be 20, huh? 20. Should be 20. All right. <laughs> and speed bumps. All right. Um, Councilor McGivern, I believe. A, a question and a suggestion. Um, if, if this is to reduce the speed limit across the board to 25, I highly suggest we hold a public hearing. Because I agree that some streets in the city of Hoyle could should be 25 or less, but not all streets. Oh, it's not and all streets. It's, it's, they could well, I, I'm asking because the way I'm reading it, and, and I guess I'm suggesting a public hearing if it is all streets. And if, and if we don't that. have control of, all, of what streets should be 25. Well, define thickly settled. Is Beach Street thickly settled? The, the entire city with the. Is Northampton Street thickly, thickly settled? settled? I don't know. Yeah, no, I think the entire city is thickly settled by law, by by definition. Yeah, I don't know. Um, even West Hoyoke is thickly settled when you when you look at the definition of what that means. And then I, I I agree with that, you know. But 25 miles an hour in some some streets is walking. You go up South Street at 25 miles an hour, and you know, right by the uh, starting at the whole donut. By the time you get to the lights, it's a half hour later. You no, know, I agree. That's why I put the last line in. Uh, thickly settled speed zone on street by street basis. So, so basically, we'd have a conversation per street. Well, I'm sure we'll go through all the nuances of it in ordinance, but just the basics is everything's 25, and then you pull out the ones you don't want to be 25. No, everything is still 30, but we have if, on a street by street basis. Instead of going through this uh, traffic study in the city to Mass DOT, we can handle it all in house. If we all locally, to, you all can just locally. change it without anything to do local with control, that. which we like. Oh, okay. All right. So it actually doesn't change anything oh, other no. than the local chain, local control piece. Yeah, we just have the uh, the authority now. We they have the authority to change it. Okay. All right. Well, Mr. 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 Yes, Council. Maybe we could add a uh, an ordinance on road rage with it while we're at it. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. Uh, okay. So motion on the floor is to send this to ordinance. So we're getting even as we're talking here, we're getting more good information. So all in favor, of sending the ordinance. Aye. Oh, so moved. Okay. So we have items 21. 21 and 22 to finance. Motion has been made and second to suspend Packing. the rules to take 21 and 22 as a package with abbreviated re reading and refer both of them to finance. Um, is there a second to that? Second. Um, refreshing your memory, item 21 is from... Uh, I've never seen one where it has sergeants patrolmen and firefighters all in one line and then it goes to police and fire that's interesting i've never seen multiple departments on one order um okay but it seems like they've uh, mixed up a number of uh more injured on duties and put them all together about twenty eight thousand dollars worth on item 21 and then item 22 is um a revolving fund request regarding the recycling program motion on the floor is to send Items 21 and 22 to finance. Councilor Sullivan. Um, is, it, is it possible to, um, I don't know if this is a friendly amendment or just to request with the uh, transfer request that we receive a, a, a list of the nature and uh, severity of the injuries involved in the request for the transfer to accompany it? No, you have to go to personnel. Yeah. yeah. Some of it might be confidential information. That's probably why they're reticent to just, you know, employee Jones has X a matter with them. They might not put that to say, you know, Mr. Jones is out because, you know, he slipped on a banana peel. I don't know. Wh whatever it could be. Um, or so and so may have X disease or illness or that's confidential. That's the problem mm -hmm. with that. But on a, you could probably well, it, discuss it with personnel to find out. Well, a disease or illness is not injured on duty. 
if somebody's in on duty, we have a public Could be, safety. Potentially, right? If you yeah. got if you got Art. acquired something, you know, while you're on the Art. job, theoretically, say you were exposed to something, you know, I don't. All right. Well, it's a personnel issue. I guess we can't uh, request that, right? Um, I think what they would prefer is you speak to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis with that for that information, as opposed to they give you a report and then it's out for public consumption. I think they want you to. They consider that pretty sensitive information. Names you can get, but what's the matter with them or how they were injured? Although I will say, on the other hand, we've had meetings where I have asked that question. In fairness to your question, and I've gotten straight answers. Oh well, we had uh, Joe Banana got injured uh, playing volleyball down at the boys' club, and he slipped and fell, and now he's on injured on duty. We've had that one before, you know. Uh, we, we've we've had a few of those in the old good old days. Um, so, but I would say pro try one off. If they don't give you the information, then let's revisit that. Okay, Councilor McGivern. Just if I could make a friendly request to have uh, both chiefs come into this meeting. Last week, the discussion was with the auditor, who was very helpful. But I think some of our questions pertain to overtime. And I, I think what is a staggering amount of injured on duty mm. can be answered in general terms. Right. Um, there's also seems to be some of this is spilling over into the retirement board, where they're getting more and more requests of going out on injured. Uh, or disability retirement. retirements and so, things. And, yeah. Yes. And that's, I, I think, in general terms, we can get some answers from both chiefs as to you know, what, what's, uh, what appears to be, you know, a, a much greater uh, issue than we've ever seen in the past. What we might also want to consider looking at is, is there anybody with non-work injuries out on paid leave too? You know, whether it's work injuries or non-work non injuries out on paid leave, are there any of those either? So, Councillor Bartley. I just want to comment on, on number 22, Mr. President. I'm yep. really excited about uh, this order. I know Councillor Bresnahan's filed order similar to this. I filed order similar to this. So, I'm really glad that it sounds like there's, looks like there's some momentum uh, with it. We're just um, I'm really enthused. Uh, I just want to point out to the, uh, if I could, to the chair, to the, to the chairman of the committee, uh, Todd, there's the, the bins themselves, I understand from Mike, are we charge $5. For somebody looking for a new bin, um, the actual cost to the, to the DPW is, is seven dollars. So I was wondering if, if possibly if that could be discussed in, in committee. And you know, may, I don't want to give a, any resident sticker shock if they're looking for a five dollar bin, but it, it does cost the city seven dollars per, per bin per, for Mike. And I know if there's a if anybody's a, a broken bin or something, they, they just replace it for at no charge. So. But though, this is really encouraging uh, to me, so I'm, right. I'm, ex I'm excited to see us moving forward. Councilor McGee. Yeah, we, we took this up in finance. The reason this is here is the ones that were referenced, uh, Councilor Bresnahan's, Councilor Bartley, were taken up at the last finance meeting. They were tabled because there's a discussion as to the amount inside the revolving account. Should it be 25? Should it be 10? A compromise was 15. Uh, there was a breakdown of what was coming back to the city from the recycling program as to the amount of monies it has uh, gone down over a period of time. Um, therefore, the thought pattern was we don't want to commit too much going into the revolving account. And the language that was in there almost seemed as if we wanted to take it all. And so we're, we're trying to fix the language to make sure a small portion goes in there to start getting bins to go out there. The revolving account from what Mike wanted to do was only for the big bins. Mm. Uh, they will get the small ones and get them out as you reference the $5 to $7 cost. But these are the big ones with the wheels, the ones that most people want in order to do more recycling. They say they uh, see an uptick in recycling based on using the big bins. In order to do this, you have to order it in bulk, and it takes a while to order as well as receive them because they're just not like the little bins that you can just ship here. So it would be like 100 bins for about $10,000 is the cost. So a lot of discussion in finance on it. Um, this was one of the other proposals coming back out. We'll take it up again uh, as all of them. If someone wants to suggest a different price, we, we'll just go into it ultimately get the final package. 
Can you, to honor Councilor McGivern's request, could you, on that other order, ask the two chiefs to come in? To oh, yeah, we will. The next we meeting? Will. Pleasure. We will. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Graney. Yeah, just quickly, uh, the $7 fee on these large bins uh, over, the, over the hall or over the use of that bin, obviously the city is going to recoup that money and then some. So at some point in time, I, it pro maybe it would be possible that the residents wouldn't be charged for these bins that we could provide them at no cost. Mr. President, Councilor McGivern. The, the issue, well, there's two issues. Going in the answer to Councilor Graney is it's costing the city $125,000 a year to run this program. It's not just about bins, it's about the recycling itself. It's a great program. I think most of us are all in favor of it. The problem with revolving funds is the revenue does not show on the cherry sheet. And even though this is revenue that we were getting from both the, the MRF when we dropped off our materials, and we know that we're getting revenue that can be estimated from what's not going into the landfill. At first, I, I, I felt that this revolving fund was not correct in terms of what a revolving fund should be, even though the intent is, is absolutely a great and, and needed intent. The compromising committee was to do the $15,000 to get these big bins out there. It might take us three years, four years. They're not easy to come by. They only make them so often, and they only make so many of them. But I think if, it, if we did a revolving fund like this for about three or four years, we could get just about everybody in the, in the uh, city one of the larger bins. But we don't want that revenue to be taken off of the cherry sheet in, in this, not a large amount, but if it is, it reflects an unbalanced budget, which really isn't unbalanced, because this is a cost of operation, these bins. So they shouldn't be in a revolving fund. Other revolving funds are costs of special <coughs> operations that are not part of what we do in the city budget itself. This is different. But I think it's, I, I will support the $15,000 and getting the big bins out there. And I, and I think, you know, Councilor Graney, I'm not sure if I answered your question, but there is a big cost to recycling on top of what we uh, on what we do in terms of getting the trucks out there and doing the uh, the pickup and everything. Yeah, oh. that's fine. That's fine. Thank you, Councilor Bartley. Just uh, uh, thank Councilor McGivern makes a good point, but I just want to add that uh, uh, the and Councilor McGee made it. I, I'm glad you're, it's just a prudent committee. I would just say that it's not from lack of recycling that the rates are are, are lower. It's just it's the return rate from the materials recycling facility that's been uh, punctured, F frankly, the, the rates have been uh, decimated. Yeah. And, and this is set by contract, and the contract numbers keep going down and down and down, though our recycling rate goes up. So, um, but, you, but we still have to be prudent as to, as to how we do this. As far as uh, turning bins around and, and getting them repaired, there's a company for which we just approved a special permit three years ago on Mosier Street that makes these things. So I'm hopeful that uh, we can give them, as a local company, some business. That they, I, mean, I bought them from there myself for, 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 my, for my own home. So, so there's, um, there's... Does United Waste Management have a contract with the city for any no. of this? No. Okay, no. just checking. I, I'm blanking the name. It's, it's a company on Mosier Street, Mr. President. I just okay. blanked the name. They out. get the recycling. No. They, 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 they create they the bins. Guess. Who, who, who do we actually turn the recycling materials over to? Turn to the materials recycling facility in Springfield. Okay. All right. Um, sorry. You're all set? I'm set. Yeah. Councilor Bresnahan. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I just, I think this is a great order. And I, I know the orders that we had filed in the past, the money, the dollar signs that they were talking about was about $70,000 when Tim Price and Bill were here about the money that comes in from the, through recycling. I believe it should be a revolving fund. I mean, it's actually the citizens of Hoyle that are doing the recycling. There should, there should be some sort of, you know, it shouldn't go to the general fund for the mayor to use as he was. The people are putting money, they're the ones that are separating the paper and the plastic. We should help more people do that. So, I mean, I'd like to be added onto the order. I think it's a great order, and uh, thank you. Councilor Bacon. I would just note that if we are able to get more bins out, it's estimated that we could recognize approximately $70,000 more in recycling reimbursement. So there are the other associated costs, but there is an opportunity here too. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor McGee. And just a final point. Just understand, if you just saw it from the account that we, we just shut down, the revolving fund comes back to us every year. So therefore, we get a chance to look at it again to see how it's working. 
here, once again, in finance, we're trying to debate what number is a real number because Joe makes a great point. It's outside of the general fund. It's outside of our purview. It's in an account that we only get to see once a year. Yeah, we can request it, but really it's a one-year review. If after three years, everyone has a new blue bin or all the big ones and the recycling is, is just going the way we hope it is, it can come back, we can shut it down, the money just goes right back into the general fund. So it's not as if it's an end-all loss, it's just a different way of accounting. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, without objection, adding Councilor Bresnahan, he has to be added as a co-sponsor. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. So moved, Councilor Talman. Yeah, just one quick point on the and, and they came down with the figures. You know, the 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 money comes in for the recycling. It's a small amount. It's going down. I don't know if it was like nine thousand dollars last year. But the, the the big thing for me is the cost that uh, that's the stuff that's not in it that we're putting down. It's like three hundred fifty thousand dollars. So I mean, you, you reduce that. You know, and people do need the bins, not just the large ones. And I, I know Tim Price goes around. I've had some conversations with him that, you know, not everybody is eligible for a large bin. And if they go around and they see how much you have, you know, um, there's a lot of people that don't have the small bins. You know, I'm sure a lot, you know a lot of people today that don't have them at all, and they do want to recycle. I, I know in neighborhoods that people just put them in the black bags, and that's it. There's no recycling at all. And that's where the big cost, I think, is, you know, the, when, you, when you put that stuff in the dump, the landfill, that's... That's a big cost to the city. So I, the more that we can get the, even the small bins out there to people, I, I think that's uh, that'd be advantageous to the community. Yeah. Yep. Instead of us paying, they're paying us. Albeit smaller amounts, it's still, it's still plus. Small. So recycling is hugely important to the community. Big fan of it. Um, so motion on the floor is to send 21 and 22 to the finance committees. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, so moved. Item 23. <clears throat> Item 23 is introduced by Councilor Vacan that the DPW and Water Commission provide a status report on the contract and the start date for the combined water sewer billing. <laughs> yep, adding Councilor McGee as a co sponsor. You signed me also on that. Adding Councilor Tallman as a co sponsor. Sullivan. Adding Councilor Sullivan as a co sponsor. McGivern. Lopez. McGivern. Lopez. Can I so do. Uh, <laughs> I think Councilor Lisi. Can I make a friendly amendment to, to this order just to get the report within 20 days or 10 days? Sure. 10 business days or I'll second days. it. With, uh, two weeks? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, report back within 14 days. All in favor of that amendment? Aye. Aye. Okay. So uh, the order now reads with many, many co-sponsors that the DPW and Water Commission provide a status report on the contract and the start date for the combined water sewer billing uh, within so, 14 days. Yes. Yeah, and so just to play devil's advocate for a moment, this is discussing, you have one component status report on the contract. I'm not quite sure what you're driving out there. You may want to be a slightly more specific. Second piece is start date for combined water sewer billing. They might say to you that's already occurred and has been occurring for they you, they mail one bill now. One bill, yeah. For both. With and one you, envelope. You, one envelope. One envelope. And you have a water sheet and a sewer sheet. I know Pheasant Drive doesn't get a sewer sheet, but uh, <laughs> I was out of the loop on that. <laughs> but anyways, I would I would say that there is two sheets and one envelope. Yeah, there are. Uh, so just define quote okay, unquote combined um, billing. On the contract for combined billing and shutoff. Authority. Oh well, that's all. Is this getting the shutoff? Hmm. Okay, you may want to spell that out more because they're going to say, oh, when, when's the start date for combined billing? Oh, well, we've been doing that for two and a half years or three years, Councilor well, Bacon. I'm, I'll accept any law, um, language from any of the attorneys or so, such minded people in the room, but my intent is to get the contract that we approved, I think it's almost two years ago now, actually completed. You mean the ordinance that we... I see what you're the saying. The ordinance the, that we approved that created the contract, which correct. we were originally told was illegal, that a year then it and became half later, magically legal. We found out yeah. magically was legal, that is still not complete. Now, my understanding is there is a draft that it's in legal, or it went over to the legal department. I believe it's been reviewed, although I'm not going to speak for Crystal. I don't even know if Crystal's the one even looking at it. My understanding is there's concern that the, the 
Water Commission wants to make sure they're going to get paid for activities and work that they do that would be on behalf of DPW, mm -hmm. which was initially a concern. That's been a public concern noted. But my understanding is the contract is done. It's been reviewed by legal. And we're sitting here looking at a $600,000 sewer deficit. Well, that's not news to us. That's why we did this two years ago, or tried to do it two years ago. It's not long. We have yet to see it actually used. actualized, to see what difference it will make, and you know we'll be asked yet again to increase the sewer rates. But I want to see this happen first. This is what we argued about, or fought for, or finally accomplished two. I think two years ago. Oh. Well, I'm 100% in favor of that. So, so whatever would, this needs to say to accomplish that, I'll welcome any amendments. <laughs> so why don't we say something along the lines of a status report on the contract for sewer shutoff, yeah. okay. and when is the start date of delinquent shutoffs? Okay. Is that is that a fair amendment? Okay. Yeah, okay. So all in favor of amending to add... So it'll read, um, provide that the DPW and Water Commission provide a status report on the contract to do sewer shutoff by the Water Department and a start date for those shutoffs of delinquent accounts. Yes, in okay. my mind, I was seeing them as yeah. all part and parcel, yeah. but that's much better language. Right. Thank you. So then they'll know exactly what we're talking mm -hmm. about, because the, really what, you, what you're zeroing in on is why aren't we doing shutoffs, and right. when is that going to begin, which is a great question. Right. Um, so uh, all in favor of that amendment? Aye. 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 So moved. Any other discussion? I think Councilor Jordan is a co-sponsor. All in favor of adopting? Aye. Opposed? Aye. So moved. <clears throat> 23 adopted as amended. Could we also copy it to finance? Okay. Um, just also add a copy to the finance jacket for 23, please. 24. 24 is introduced by Councilor Vacan that we adopt state law chapter 17a if necessary or enforce the state laws if adoption of this law is not needed and then it goes down to uh, a full verbiage of the 17a section so um i believe we sent this to ordinance the other one yes and i would like it also to go to legal so that when okay. we take it up into ordinance they'll have had a chance to look at it to see if we need to adopt it because okay. we've so, had a lot of confusion. Ordinance about with a copy to the law department. What is current law? Great. Thank you. All in favor of taking item number 24 and referring it to uh, ordinance with a copy to the law department? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Item number 25 is introduced by Councilors Bartley and Vacan. DPW installs signage on Homestead Avenue, Route 202 South, on the bend in the road near Hummiston Slope, warning motorists to slow down and that cars are exiting on the right. This is a constituent request. I'll motion to receive and adopt and send a copy to public safety, please. Second. Second. Motions receive and adopt and send a copy to public safety. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Item number 26, introduced by Councilor Barley, that the city install a crosswalk from Blessed Sacrament Church to Messier parking lot across Northampton Street near Carlton. This is a constituent request. Ordinance, please. Okay, motion's been made and second to send to ordinance. I filed this probably 15 years ago, and I think I got something along the lines of they couldn't do it. Well, but I hope uh, I did. We, 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 had a, we had a warmer discussion about three years ago on it, and so now we didn't get there, but, but here we go again. <laughs> all right, great. Nothing like good old discussions. Uh, all in favor of sending uh, 26 to ordinance? Aye. Aye. Oh, so moved. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. Mr. President, if I may suggest yes. something. I we have a package, and the clerk did tell me we had a package. Could I take up... 
Can I suspend the rules? Take up A, B, D, E, F, G, and H. Ooh. That's nice. <laughs> but they're all my files. How come? G and H. Receive as a package. <laughs> Are these going to committee or is I'm going to send to public safety and ask the public safety chair if October 26th is a possibility. Public safety chair? <laughs> what are they listed? Uh, we'll get into okay. it in a second. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Dan. We'll get into it. All right. We have to suspend the rules first before we can talk about it. So. Well, well right. We're just, not, unless we we're, we're going to talk about it, we're sent, these are all requests to send to public safety. So I'm just reading okay. them. And we're going to vote to send in the committee or not vote to send in the committee, but not discuss unless we suspend the rules. Here we go. Just send to committee. We don't okay. need to suspend. Yeah. Late file A from Council Leahy ordered that an emergency button be installed in the city council chamber. What? <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's, that's a panic button. <laughs> Councilor Bartley is out of line. <laughs> <laughs> Police, rendezvous. Easier. You guys are shocked. <laughs> Um, you know, by the, the way, we actually had the first target coming in the room is the president. That's what they said. Yeah, yeah. I got this. Back off. <laughs> you got to get through Ryan to get to me, right? <laughs> you'll, you'll throw. You'll, you'll throw yourself in Ryan, front of me, floor. right? <laughs> Ryan, he'll protect me. Ryan and Brenda will be down, <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> um, we've actually had, you know, in the past, we've had people who were not totally thrilled with our services here and we've had to have police protection yeah. and actually I believe there actually is an ordinance that says there shall be a police at all council meetings but uh, on that one uh, I spoke to the chief about it he actually wants three buttons in this room three buttons okay <laughs> all right okay how many three I know where one of them's going for <laughs> <laughs> Late file B introduced by Council Lee ordered that the proper procedures should be set forth at City Hall in regards to an emergency or threat of violence. There needs to be a clear plan of action. Late file D introduced by Council Lee that surveillance cameras be installed in the corridors of the City Hall and the annex. Late file E, introduced by Councilor Lee, ordered that emergency buttons in the clerk's office and mayor's office be immediately tested and fixed if necessary. Late file F, introduced by Councilor Lee, that the police department conduct training for the employees of City Hall and the annex in regards to threats of violence, a lockdown, what employees should do in a case of emergencies. Please send to the Hoya Police for setting up a schedule of trainings. Late file G, introduced by Councilor Leahy, Police Department conduct a training with city councilors in regards to threats of violence or an emergency at city council meetings and subcommittee meetings. Late file H, introduced by Councilor McGee, that the city invite Captain Matt Moriarty into, a pub, into public safety to discuss and develop and implement an emergency response system for city departments. Motion on the floor is to send all of those items to public safety. Are we gonna have a discussion or save it for committee? I hear head shaking no. Motion on the floor is to send all of those items to public safety. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. We That's now, what I meant to, oh, to lest we forget late file get, C. We have all Jimmy's orders because it Late file C, introduced by Councilor Leahy, ordered that representatives from Action Ambulance come to a meeting of public safety to discuss response times and other pertinent issues. I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor. I had a constituent call on that that I relayed to the fire department. I, I um, followed that order a few months ago. I think you did actually, yeah. yeah. What was that one again? Uh, bring in action ambulance to discuss response times yeah, and um, other pertinent issues. Motion on the floor is to send it to public safety. All, all unless we're suspending rules, all in favor of sending to public safety? Aye. 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 Opposed? So move. Item C to public safety. Late file I, introduced by Councillor Jordan. This we will need final action. This was at the request of the law department. That the law department provide us a legal update on current cases pending against the city or where we are a plaintiff. Please provide us a cost to date for these cases, including costs of any outside council costs. If there's been any settlements or proposed settlements, 
please also let us know those as well. If executive session is needed, then law department, please make the requ that request so we can coordinate a time. Ideally, this can be done before our next city council meeting. And I was referring not to this meeting, but our next, so I mentioned that to Paul. And so uh, I would request, motion is second. second request that this suspend the rules so that we can uh, take final action on this. All in favor? Aye. Also move. Motion on the floor <coughs> is to adopt refer to the law department so they can prepare us a report and I'd like to carve out at least 30 minutes before say our next meeting uh, a full council meeting and then we can kind of go through that um, and get an update on everything all right any discussion on that yes Councilor Sullivan do we need to do something to allow for an executive session if necessary um, I can call that as a special yeah. Yeah. before as long as I have enough notice I can do it yep as long as the law and the law department will tell me, Councilor Lopez, are we are we including the school department in this or not? Sure, okay. there are cases involving the city. Okay, okay. Yeah. I just want to double check. Yeah, yeah. All, all the you. departments, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one there comes to mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah at least yeah. maybe two now. Yeah, that I'm aware of. Um, okay, all in favor of receiving a DAP and referring to the law department? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those, so moved. Play file J. Order introduced by Councilor Leahy that DPW give Roberts Field a street number. There's too much confusion when people put the addresses into GPS. Um, ordinance, I think, would be required here. Right? Yeah, please, order a copy to the DPW. Okay, motion on the Take floor it. is to send to the Ordinance Committee a late file J with a copy to the DPW. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Late file L is a petition from concerned citizens of McIntosh Terrace requesting speed bumps to be placed on their street. And it's signed by, just eyeballing it, about maybe 25 people-ish uh, from the street. So, um, ordinance? Second. Ordinance. Yep. Yeah. Second. Okay. Yeah. Motion on the floor is to take uh, late file L and refer it to the ordinance committee for additional action. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. <laughs> Late file M is introduced by the mayor, hereby requesting that the city council approve a home rule petition requiring full state reimbursement to the city of charter school expenses based on MGL chapter 71, section 89 funding formula so that I can sign this order and send it to the state senate and house of reps uh, of the commonwealth, sincerely the mayor, recommend this go to committee so this could be drawn in the legal form I would assume right to ordinance perhaps maybe the chair could take that up I know uh, Devin Sheehan approached me obviously I have no problem with that I just wondered um, how it differs from what happens now we don't get I guess that we don't get the full whatever <laughs> whether the state will give it to us if we ask I don't know yeah. please, yeah, give, us, make a please give us more it money goes to ordinance yeah so we'll have to have something drawn up in legal form and then um, vote it out of the council at the next meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Late file N. Oh, late file N is our uh, unrequested legal opinion on the towing issue, Ordinance. which we referred uh, to earlier. Uh, late file N, uh, motion on the floor is to send to ordinance. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, so moved. Late file O is an order introduced by Councilors Bartley, Lisi, Leahy, McGee, Tallman, McGivern, Graney, Lopez, and LV. I'm assuming that's Linda Bacon. <laughs> or I'll just put O and E, O and E in between the L and the V, so we have love. Um, that the City Council give a proclamation to the H following HPD members, Lieutenant Cruz, L Officer Romero, Officer uh, Morales, for their service in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in aiding the needs in Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. I believe those were the officers that went to Puerto Rico for us, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, well uh, take final action on this? Yes. Yeah. Second. Adding Councillor Bresnahan to this. Everybody. And yeah, Councilor Jordan. And, and maybe Councilor Lopez, 
if you could give us a little commentary on an article I read today yes. that you forwarded, which is really interesting, just give us maybe a, a two-minute synopsis. Uh, all in favor of taking final action on this? Aye. Aye. Opposed, Aye. So moved. Um, adding Councilor Bresnan, adding Councilor Jordan as co-sponsors. Councilor Lopez, I would assume the motion here is to adopt. Yes. Adopt. Is, uh, is there a second? Second. second. Uh, these three officers go down here, and somehow I read they were asked to go home. So yes. please tell us. I, I, um, I'm trying to get to the bottom what happened in Puerto Rico. I know that they went, to, they went through the proper channels asking permission to do uh, some home visit and some relative in, in the south part of Puerto Rico. So they got they um, they received the permission. They went there with uniform, with the holy uniform. And there were other police officers there too from other, from other they, towns. That there were others, yeah. and um, so they were there. They videotaped everything, and then the videos went all over. And I think when um, the top government saw it, they didn't like it, and we got them back, wow. which is not fair because I mean they were doing a fair job and. Um, so now I'm not sure what's going to happen with the rest of the police officers, if they're going to go back or not. So. Interesting. Very interesting development. So, um, but nevertheless, we have three three great officers that uh, certainly helped and uh, carried our goodwill to uh, a very embattled island at this point, needing lots of repair and love. <clears throat> So, um, all in, okay, Councilor Sullivan. Could you make sure my name's not the only one left off of that? <laughs> <laughs> adding Councilor Sullivan. <laughs> yes, adding Councilor LeBron Martinez. And, and anyone else that has been missed. Um, so, all in favor of adopting this? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Late file P introduced by Councilors Lopez and Bresnahan that the Hoyoke notification system only purpose should be for emergency notifications by, and establish this by ordinance. Absolutely. Okay. Can I be added to that? Right. No more uh, election it's announcement. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, add my name to that one too, please. <laughs> adding Dear Councilor Lord. Vacan. Adding Councilor uh, Bartley. I'd be willing to pre-record one, you know, for them. You know, uh, please vote tomorrow. Do your civic duty. Oh, I don't think I'll be Classic. asked. I don't think I'll be asked. Uh, motion on the floor is to receive and refer to ordinance. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. They file Q. Introduced by Councilors Lopez, Graney, and the last thing there is a blur. That the minutes from the CPA be provided to the city council. Um, sure. Um, we could take suspend the rules to take sure. final action of this. <laughs> All in favor of that? Gee, thanks. Aye. Aye. Paul, Aye. So moved. <laughs> so one word. Well, I just want to meet expectations. <laughs> Motion to receive a dot referred to the uh, CPA, CPA committee. I think would be in order. Double. The minute maker who was recently retained by the CPA committee today. Uh, to, to do the minutes and really want to give a, a shout out to Ryan Allen for really stepping up to help the CPA committee and they really appreciate his efforts and he's really being really uh, a tremendous tremendous help and there actually is going to be a stipend Good. added on as Good. he deserves uh, for a lot of additional extra work and uh, uh, to do that so kudos to him kudos to the committee for selecting him so he is the minutes person he's doing a lot of leg work for those guys so um, in addition to all his duties with us so having said that um, a motion to receive adopt refer this oh, over to the CPA oh. Councilor McGivern just, uh, just semantics but to the City Council but they have to be filed with the City Clerk like all minutes um, I don't think there's a requirement to file minutes with the city clerk. I think, you're I think each board is required to hold on to their own in the event of a request for public inspection. To get them to us. Yes, 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 oh, yes, yes, right. Yes, and Ryan being a hand in both worlds, he could perhaps uh, throw those on as they come out as a communication. Uh, would be helpful. Technically, we should be getting their agendas to all councilors, like we get the agendas of all the other boards. There's an ordinance on that. 
the long tentacles of city council, which are very appropriate and needed. Uh, all in favor of adopting? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Unfortunately, we have no other items. I should adjourn. Uh, so you'll have to request an adjournment. <laughs> if not, we'll just stare stare at each other deeply. <laughs> motion uh, to adjourn. All in favor of a uh, motion to adjourn? Is there a second? All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Opposed? So moved. That's one that's got to go to uh, ordinance. Yeah, but this one committee. Yeah, but this one here you said. Ordinance, the 